بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. And we talked about disliked water, and we talked about haram water, and now we are here. There are three reasons why water would not be purifying. Why water would not be purifying. So remember that by default, that means automatically water is purifying. We already said the rule last time. Anyone can remind us of the rule? What's the rule for what water we can use for purification? Ah, there it is. Correct answer. Whatever comes from the sky or from the ground. So here's the rule right here. Any water that falls from the sky. Or springs from the earth. Regardless of its characteristic. Means could be black, could be green, could have some smell that you're not accustomed to. Or flavor that you don't recognize. But it's water. In Aslil Khilqah, as long as it were as originally created. So that's the water you can use for purification. So, in other words, then, water is automatically purifying. That statement there is better than Abu Shuja's statement. May Allah have mercy on him. Abu Shuja said, the waters that you can use for purification are seven. The water of the sky, the water of the sea, the water of the river, the water of the well, the water of the spring. This statement here is better than that statement of Abu Shuja because it includes everything he said. And it's more concise. That's what the scholar said. That's not me. I didn't make that up. He said, so if water is black, but from a spring or rain, it's purifying. Correct. Now here's a detail for you, a, a benefit for you. What if you found some water, you encountered some water in a pitcher somewhere, like a container somewhere? For example, you went to go visit some family. You got out the car, you went up to their house, nobody's home, you need to pray. But alhamdulillah, there is a container of water right there. So can you use it? Yes, you can use it. Someone might say, but maybe it's used. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe it's not purifying. Mm, you don't have to assume that. You can just use it. So now we're going to talk about what makes water not purifying. There are three reasons why water would not be purifying. One, a small amount of water used in an obligation. A small amount of water used in an obligation. So we have some cases here. Under this one, we have some cases here. A, upon separation from the organ, that means the water dripped off of you. It fell from your face. It fell from your arms. Or upon a submerged body or organ exiting a small amount of water. It means you are in a tub that's not a, a large amount of water, or you are in some barrel that's not a large amount of water. And you made your intention to lift the impurity while you're in that water, submerged in the water. Then you got out of the water, you stepped out of it. So now when you step out of that water, it became used because you were submerged in it. So that's two cases here. One, you put the water on your organ. Once it dripped off of you and separated from you, a small amount of water that's dripping off of you, and you made the intention for lifting the impurity, then the water that separates from you is no longer purifying. And vice versa. When you separate from the water, if it's a small amount of water, so let's say you just had a little bucket of water, a little sink of water. And then when you made wudu, you dipped your arm in there with the intention. Then when you pull your arm out, 
now all that water is used because it was only a little bit. Now you can't use that water for your other arm or for your feet. You're going to need new water now. That water is not purifying anymore. So upon separation from the organ or upon a submerged body or organ exiting a small amount of water, then that water that's used in an obligation will no longer be purifying because what happened was it was purifying water when you applied it to your impure organ with an intention, then the impurity in your organ was taken away by the water and the purity the purifying power was taken by the organ. So the organ takes that purifying power out of the water, which removes the impurity out of the organ. So when that water separates from your organ or when you separate from the water, it's no longer purifying if that's a little bit of water. Is that clear? And when the body comes out, that's exactly what we said here. When the body separates, when the submerged body or organ exits the small amount of water. The, the, the issue is separating here, separating. So either the water was on you and then it dripped off of you, so it separated from you. Once it separated and you had the intention, then it's not purifying anymore. Or you were in the water and it was only a little bit of water and you had an intention. And then you got out of the water. So when you separate from that water, it's still in its container, but it was only a little bit. And you stepped out of it and you had an intention while you were in it. Then when you step out of that water, then its purifying power is gone. Is that clear? You said, what if I'm in... That's what I just said to you. That's what I said now. That's exactly all of what I just said. If you were in the water and it was a small amount of water and you made an intention and you got out of the water, I said, here, submerged body or organ. Submerged body or organ. I said, would my purification be valid? Yes, your purification is valid. Or, or else, why is the water not purifying anymore? What made the water not purifying anymore if the purification is not valid? Is it clear? You said you thought only a part of the body was pure. Whatever was in the water depends on what was in the water. So that's why we said here, we covered everything. Everything you're asking was covered in one statement here. What did we say? Upon separation from the organ, that's the water dripping off of you, or upon a submerged body or organ, a submerged body, or a submerged organ exiting a small amount of water. So that's clear now, inshallah. So not by simply rubbing it from one side of the organ to the other. Rubbing the water back and forth on your organ, that doesn't remove the purifying power of the water. It won't be until the water separates from you that it loses its purifying power. Or that when you separate from that small amount of water, that's when it will lose its purifying power. From this, it is understood that the water from the second and third washes remain purifying because you already lifted the impurity by the first wash. The second and third washes, they just look like the first wash. It's sunnah. Recommended to do them. However, reusing that water is not recommended. Reusing the water when you take, so when you wash the first wash, you cannot reuse that water because it's not purifying anymore. When it's a small amount, once it separates. Now you want to do the second wash, which is sunnah. So that second wash is not lifting any impurity from your organs because the first wash already lifted it. So is this water from the second wash still purifying? Tell, tell me the answer, please. Is the water from the second wash still purifying? Yes, it is. So then if you use the water from the second wash for the third wash, that's valid 
But is it recommended? No, it's not recommended. Very good. Alhamdulillah. So what's another case where the water loses its purifying power? So here's B. Also, a small amount of water used to remove filth. It would remain pure. This is an important mas'ala here. We'll probably stop at this mas'ala. A small amount of water used to remove filth. Sometimes, not always, sometimes that small amount of water will stay pure. Now, you might be baffled here. If the only thing you learn is that a small amount of water becomes contaminated by najasa, that might be your case here. So this is an important rule you need to learn here. You might say, wait, wait, I've been studying Mukhtasar now for years and years. I only learn that if najasa contacts a small amount of water, then the water is najasa, even if it doesn't change. You telling me something new now? No, nothing new. Just a detail that missed you, that's all. That's not impossible. Don't think because you learned a new detail that you've been shortchanged. Even sometimes a companion would learn a new detail he didn't know. So what's that case? A small amount of water used to remove filth, sometimes it will remain pure. How? If it is poured over the filth, over, over, that's an important word there. If it is poured over the filth, that means don't put the filth into the water. If you put filth into a small amount of water, you'll contaminate all of the water. The rule is, whichever one comes on top is the stronger one. That's why. So if the najasa comes onto the water, then it will contaminate the water. But if the water comes on top of the najasa, then you got a chance of not contaminating that little bit of water. You have a chance. So, a small amount of water used to remove filth remains pure if it is poured over the filth. That's one. Also, the attributes of the water do not change. So, the color, taste, and smell of the water that you poured over the filth don't change. That's two. Three, the water does not get heavier. If you can tell, don't go far here. If you can tell that the water got heavier, then you're going to judge it as Najis. We're saying, you poured a little bit of water over Najasa. Its color, taste, or smell didn't change, but you could tell that the water got heavier than its Najasa. If the color, taste, or smell changed, it's najasa. Or if it got heavier, then it's najasa. So what if the color, taste, and smell did not change? And the water did not get heavier. And, and there's one more thing, though. And the najasa is gone. So when we said remove the filth here, it means the, it's gone. So, you finish pouring the water, and then you looked at the spot, and the najasa is still there. So, what's the judgment of all the water that ran off of it? And it's only a little bit of water. It's filthy. Okay. So, if you pour water, a little bit of water over najasa, you have a chance to maintain its purity. You pour the water, and the color, taste, and smell of the water didn't change. And the water did not get heavier. And the spot, the najasa on the spot is cleared away. It's gone. It's removed. Then what's the judgment of the water that ran off of the spot? It's pure. Still pure. It didn't become najis. But is it purifying? Can you collect that water now and make wudu with it? No, you can't. Correct answer. It lost its purifying power because you used it for lifting the jazz.